time now to bring in our classic film expert. It's Joe Fortunato, Film School. And good morning, Joe. How are you? Good morning, Gene. Good morning, everybody. And so what do you have for us this week? Well, today we're going a little outside the box for us. Uh, we're going to do an animated film, which we don't normally do, and a music-related one. Uh, we're celebrating the 55th anniversary of Yellow Submarine, uh, the Beatles feature from 1968, which was released this week, uh, 55 years ago, November 13th, 1968. And uh, for those who haven't seen it, uh, it's an animated feature uh, starring the Beatles as they accompany Captain Fred in his yellow submarine to the, the Pepperland uh, uh, to free the music-hating Blue Meanies. It's a, an adventure. It's a, it's a satire. It's a comedy. It's a psychedelic freakout. <laughs> it's a little bit of everything. But it was directed by George Dunning. It was written by a number of people, including Eric Siegel, who you might remember that name because he was the writer of Love Story. Uh, so if Love Story came, Eric Siegel was one of the writers. Um, this was the fourth of five theatrical musicals, or, or five theatrical features uh, featuring the Beatles, including Hard Day's Night, Help, Magical Mystery Tour, this one, Yellow Submarine, and then later, Let It Be. Now, it stars the Beatles as their singing voices. So all the songs are actually the Beatles, but the other voices, the voices of the speaking Beatles, were voice actors that did the Beatles parts. I remember when I was a kid and found that out, I was a little disappointed, but they do a great job because uh, uh, it's, it's very, very convincing. Director George Dunning was only given 11 months to complete this film. Just to put that in perspective, a typical Disney film, animated film, would take about four years at that time. So it was really, really rushed. The movie was a massive uh, critical and commercial sense uh, success in North America. The reception in the United Kingdom was a little less favorable, though, partly because of the press's cynicism towards the Beatles at that time in their later uh, activities in the late 60s. Uh, you know, they were doing stuff in India, and they had their costly Apple boutique in London. Uh, so the press was kind of down on them. And it was uh, uh, so in the U.K., it had respectable but not stellar box office returns, but big hit in the United States. And it's reportedly one of the favorite movies of our late departed Queen Elizabeth II, uh, who actually owned her own copy of the film. That's interesting. So did this movie make a lot of money in the United States, do you know? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the box office, but like I said, it was a, a success um, uh, in the United States and, and has since become sort of a cult classic. Um, now, now, it's interesting because the um, the Beatles really wanted little to do with this project, so that's one of the reasons why the voice actors were used. But because the movie was a smash hit, uh, and and um, even the band was impressed, they agreed at the last minute to appear in sort of a hastily shot live action epilogue. And those who uh, have seen the film know what I'm talking about. They uh, kind of appear as themselves at the very end. So uh, that was sort of a late late tack on. Uh, a German artist named Heinz Edelman uh, worked as the production design. And he was so uh, un upset by uh, thinking it was so bad, after two months of inactivity, he decided to quit. He vented those frustrations by drawing a series of villainous characters, uh, which then became the Blue Meanies, the Apple Bonkers, the Glove. Um, and uh, he even gave the, because he hated Disney Studios, he expressly designed most of the Blue Meanies to be wearing Mouseketeer hats which if, uh, again, fans of the film will remember that. Also, interesting little trivia, the Blue Meanies have six figures, six fingers on each hand, uh, which was poking fun at the common practice of the animators, especially at Disney, of you know dropping the pinking and having their characters with only four fingers. So uh, a little subterfuge against the Disney machine there as well. Well, that's interesting. You know, I, I certainly remember the movie i mean i remember that it happened and i remember kind of snapshot images in my mind but i don't think i ever actually watched this movie from end to end is it worth doing well it's certainly for beatles fans and one of the aside from the fact that uh, it's the anniversary this week uh, you know we I, I chose the film because we also have some beatles news um with uh, the new their new single which is uh, amazing last week i love so that the beatles are sort of in the forefront i'm a big beatles fan uh i love the film you know, it's not a masterpiece. I'm not going to sit there and suggest that to anybody. But if you're a Beatles fan, it's certainly fun. 
Um, even if you're not, I think it's fun just to, as a goofy adventure. If you're sort of into uh, sort of psychedelic art and things like that, um, it's it's for the whole family. I mean, in fact, around this time is when the Motion Picture uh, Association created their rating system, and this was the first film that was awarded a G rating. So it was uh, suitable for everybody. Okay, that's interesting. And thank you so much for being on with us again this morning. Joe Fortunato going to film school with him. We do that every Friday morning at 8.15.